Hey everybody, it is Natalie from Power Moon Tarot. Welcome to your reading. Today's reading is called Should You Move for Love? Now this is always a fun question for those of you that are in dating someone and you're, they live somewhere else or you're just thinking of getting out of your current town because there's no one really there that you like or into. I myself in my life have moved you know, cities for love before. In fact, I feel like I've done it many times. So <laughs> anyway, I feel somewhat qualified to give you guys advice on this topic. And let's go ahead and get into your reading. For pile number one, we have the winky face emoji. For pile number two, we have the rose. Okay. And for pile number three, we have the big eyes cute face emoji. Okay. So go ahead and choose the pile that is resonating for you. Focus in. Maybe it's the color of the tarot deck here. Maybe it's just the combinations of the colors on the table. This is pile one, pile two, and pile three. Whatever you are drawn to today, whatever feels right for you. And there'll be a link in the description box below to your pile. So with that being said, we are going to begin with pile number one. Let's do it for pile number one. Okay, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and begin. Pile number one, welcome to your reading. You chose the winky face, and today's reading is called Should You Move for Love? Maybe you hate the town that you're in, and you're thinking, hey, I might have better luck in love in another town. Or perhaps you're dating somebody, or you like someone in a different town, and you're like, I'm thinking about getting the hell out of Dodge, Natalie. And if that is the case, my darling, we are going to check in with your guides and angels and see if you should be moving for love at this point. If that's in the cards here for pile number two. Should pile number, or sorry, I don't know why I called you guys pile number two. Should pile number one, should pile number one move for love? Should pile number one move for love, spirit? Should pile number one To pile number one, move for love. There we go. All right, guys, let's take a look. We've got the queen of pentacles. Some of you may have a good thing going where you are right now, or you're thinking of moving for job or for money, or, you know, you're anticipating more money, more money, more problems, pile number one. But at the same time, the Queen of Pentacles can pretty much handle a lot. So, you know, sometimes we have a good thing going. We really don't want to shake it up or we really don't want to, you know, there is there is opportunity where we're at or there is, you know, growth, future growth. Okay. But let's go ahead and see. Let's check your pile. Pile number one. Your song. Ooh, wow. Okay. Your song is a song by Nine Inch Nails called Something I Can Never Have. I still recall the taste of your tears echoing, your voice just like ringing in my ears. My favorite dreams of you were ashore. You make this all go away. I'm down to just one thing and I'm starting to scare myself. Interesting. You make this all go away, okay? And that is a song by the lovely Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. We've got the Queen of Swords. We've got the World card. Saying goodbye is such sweet sorrow, pile number one. And we have the Star card. Okay, and I'm going to get all your cards out and then we'll talk. We have Sagittarius and Voyager. You know, something I'm getting here is like, it's too late. I already made the decision to be where I'm at or to stay where I'm at. Um, you know, there is a lot here about lost dreams. I feel like with this star card, very 
reflective, very emotive. But I also feel like when you guys make a final decision, that's it. With the Queen of Swords in the world, like once you close the door, the door is always closed. And yes, you may dream about some other outcome or could things be some other way or what ifs is what I'm getting here, okay? And perhaps someone was supposed to come visit you or see you or someone was supposed to come to you instead, okay? And Sagittarius is, it says the Voyager here, okay? So somebody who does liked, and there's an airplane right there, somebody who is very independent, adventurous, okay? Unbridled enthusiasm, boundless traveling, risk-taking, okay? So perhaps there is a Sagittarius involved in the equation here. And, um, we have not today, moody, annoyed, leave me alone, four of cups. Okay. You know, I feel like there was someone that you got annoyed with them. Like they were always promising to come see you or they were promising to come be with you. And, um, you know, you got sick of this person's attitude towards this pile number one and I feel like you demanded an answer about something you're like um I need the closure that I'm seeking or I need you to be accountable for this or I need you to I need you to use common sense with me and tell me something that I don't already know okay and um yeah so that's interesting we have isolating thoughts okay and we have here, we have the temple. Ooh, I love that. Home, the temple and home. I no longer search outside of myself for home. Wow, pile number one. I no longer search for anything outside of myself because inside of myself is home. And, you know, when you wish upon a star and when you find that inner awareness within yourself and you're completely vulnerable and honest with yourself, everything becomes crystal clear. And I do feel like there is a decision here to stay home or to go home because it literally says home on this card right here you know and I kind of feel maybe you guys ended something where you live right now and this other person took off and you're like well I wish I could just take off like that too but I also feel like this person is like a lot more alone and a lot more like alone with their thoughts than they've ever kind of been. And I think you made the right decision. I think you made the mature decision, pile number one. It's a hard decision to make sometimes. Maybe you haven't made the decision yet, but you're trying to make the decision. It's like, I need to be extremely strategic here with the Queen of Swords. I can't just go, you know, and the Queen of Pentacles could definitely say, hey, you got some money to make or you've got some practical responsibilities and you've got, good opportunities where you are, okay? And I think with the star card and this home card, I feel like things are gonna get better where you're at, okay? Or things are going to start to feel like you're healing and you're healing at home or you're healing where you're at. And it's not that you don't reflect on things, it's not that you don't think of the past, but I also feel like you're much more comfortable at home, okay? And yeah, interesting. So there is a need here with the Queen of Swords to make a really smart, logical, unemotional decision. And I feel like this Queen of Swords is making the decision to close the door on something. And yeah. Pile number one, we have Mercury and mind. Yes, think, 
carefully about your plans, your choices, your decisions, what road you're walking down, okay? And yeah, I feel like somebody lives their life a bit more maybe on the road than you or is more mobile than you or um, somebody who could have told you like, oh, we're gonna go here or we're gonna go there or we're gonna do all these things together, but you found out that it wasn't true or this person didn't have the stability that you're looking for. So I'm gonna say no, pile number one. I don't think, I think if you, I think home is gonna get better with the star card in this temple of home here. And I think you're making the right decision to close the door on something. And if you have been annoyed and felt moody and felt off, and maybe it's because it was taking a while to finally make the decision to close the door. Um, but I can tell you that you've been on this person's mind and you have been in their thoughts and, you know, being on the road for them or being gone for them isn't all it's been cracked up to be. I think they've been very alone and isolated with their thoughts and, um, I think they're missing you or missing home pile number one, but I feel like once you make up your mind about something and make a decision on something, you know, <sighs> I think that's it. I think the door, you're like, well, the door is closed. And um, I feel like you're saying, you know, I got sick of this person like promising me stuff. It wasn't really reality, you know? Um, and somebody has to be the adult um, in this situation and like, you know, <laughs> make the smart decision. And so I feel like you did do that or you will do that. We have the three of wands here, the four of swords, the high priestess. Okay. I feel like there's a message here of like, well, you already made your decision, it, you can't really come back to me now. Like you've already made your choice, you've already made your decision, um, you know, don't come kind of crawling back to me now. So that is interesting. Wow, we have the death card. But that is a gorgeous death card, okay? And something within you told you that there was an ending coming and that this was going to cool, I feel like. And that this situation between you and this person, um, you know, wasn't going to last or it wasn't going to be what you thought it was gonna be. Like if you thought it was gonna be an adventure with the three of wands here, but all it ended up doing is like draining you Okay, or it made you like second guess your choices and what you've decided. Pile number one. I'm going to say, I already kind of told you earlier, pile number one, what I said here. But the answer to this question is no, I don't think you should move for love. I think you should let go of something and leave it in the past and make a decision to close the door and move forward with the information that you now know. And, you know, there's always something, there's probably this piece of you within you that is like adventurous and just wants to say, oh, fuck it to hell with all of it. Let's just leave and go. Um, but I also feel like there could have been, you know, major communication problems with this person or there is major, there has a potential to be major communication problems where you bring something up and they shut it down right away. Or you try to talk about something and they shut it down right away. Um, and so there could be some communication problems with this connection. And I do feel like your intuition is telling you that no, the high priestess and the death card, like no, this is not 
um, you know, my intuition, I, I let, I want my, I want to let my intuition kind of be in control here, but my intuition is telling me that this is not, this is not the right choice for me. Okay. So I feel like the answer to this particular relationship is no, I, I feel like there is good things that can happen to you. I feel like better can come your way at home where you are. It doesn't mean that you're not on this person's mind. I believe that you are pile number one or that this wouldn't be a hard decision to make or a hard because there's other things on the line here besides just this relationship. You know, there's other investments and there's other, could be family things, job things, investments, you know, there's other things on the line here besides that. And so, you know, with death and the high priestess, it kind of maybe feels a little bit like the end of a dream or the end of something that perhaps, you know, I just want something I can never have, you know, and that may feel very frustrating I, I know that that can be very disappointing and frustrating pile number one, but I also think there's, you know, beauty and acceptance and beauty in looking deep within and learning the truth and trusting yourself and your intuition. Okay. And, um, yeah, I do feel like something within you is telling you, um, this relationship wouldn't last. It might be fun at first, but this person has a way of running away or ignoring problems and they may have issues with communication and that just isn't going to kind of work, you know, for you is what I think. Okay. So I'm going to say no to this pile, pile number one. I don't think you should move for love, my dears. I think there's a lot more healing at home that is there for you and it can grow for you. So pile number one. Thank you so much for coming to your reading, my loves. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments, and your feedback on that reading. Let's go ahead and begin with pile number two. Pile number two, welcome to your reading. You chose the rose, and today's reading is called Should You Move for Love? If you're dating someone or talking to someone who lives you know, some distance from you and you're wondering, should I move for love? Or maybe you're just sick of the town you're in and you're like, ah, oh, there's nothing for me here. Should I consider going somewhere else to find love? Okay. And this can be a really fun, exciting question. So let's go ahead and get into it. Pile number two. Let's see. Should you move for love? Should pile number two move for love, please? Okay, show me, show me pile number two, moving for love. Ooh, okay now. <laughs> Lots of stories to come out here, pile number two. Should pile number two move for love? Should pile number two move for love? We've got the seven of cups on the bottom of the deck. All right, and let's see what we have here for your song. Ooh, all right, your guys' song is called Crush by Jennifer Page, and the lyrics go, it's just a little crush, not like I faint every time we touch. It's just some little thing. It's not like everything I do depends on you, okay? And I love this here because I feel like you guys could have been telling your friends or telling your girlfriends or, you know, talking to people that you know and saying, you know, I'm talking to this guy or I'm talking to this girl or whoever it is. And I don't really know. I don't really know what my feelings are. I'm not really sure. There's a little flirtation going on. And I don't know, like kind of being coy about something here. Okay, so perhaps you guys started talking to somebody who lives in a different place and it's like, uh, we're just talking, I don't know, type of thing, being really quaint about it. We have the Page of Cups. Ooh, and this during a love reading is my crush card. 
So someone definitely has a crush here. On, and the song you guys got is Crush. That's the title of the song you got as well. So somebody definitely has a little crush here on pile number two. We have the Emperor, okay? And you could be wondering, is this person serious? Like they are being awfully flirty and they are being awfully fun towards me. The Knight of Cups, okay? And let's see what else we have going on. We've got the semi sextile and allowing, okay? This is an encouraging energy that sees the potential in something and gives hope to something. And this is something that could respond, grow, or realize reward in the future, okay? Honestly, pile number two, uh, let's see what else we've got. Oh, wow, pile number two. This is the Queen of Wands in my deck, Soul Messages, and it says on it, baby, I'm fabulous, okay? Pride, ego, overcoming shyness, bold moves. Wow, pile number two. Baby, I'm fabulous. Why wouldn't you want me? Why wouldn't you be into me? Okay, this person could really think that you're very beautiful, sexy, confident, strong, um, gorgeous hair, okay? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. We have here air, ace, and this is Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, so this would be equivalent to the ace of swords, okay? This person could have brought something up about this issue or teased you about moving where they are, you know? And I actually feel like they're serious about it with the emperor backing up this page of cups. I actually do feel that they are serious about you potentially moving there. And maybe they mentioned something and it right now it is just a small little crush or it's just a small little thing. But if they brought something up to you or you randomly brought something up to them and there was giggling and laughing or wouldn't that be funny type of a thing, then yeah. And um, I also feel like somebody could be a parent here or have a child in this connection, could have a son or a young child, okay? This person could be a father, they could be, um, or if they're younger and you're younger, their father may have a big influence on their particular life, okay? And, um, you know, so I do see something about a father and a son here, all right? And um, this person's, uh, you know, maybe, you know their father or they've told you about their dad or something, but I am seeing a father-son combination or they've talked to you about their child. Here's what I see. I see them coming to visit you with this Knight of Cups. I see them coming, going towards the right here, facing the right. I see them coming to visit you in the future and seeing if there is something more there, okay? With the Knight of Cups, it's like, I do feel like this person wants to see you. I do feel like they like you, pile number two. And I do feel like they are into you, okay? And, um, you know, whether the people in their life would support them in this endeavor, you know, we have semi-sextile and allowing, so... You know, whether the people around them would encourage this or see the potential in this connection, um, you know, takes time. It takes time. There is a, there is an opening there. A semi-sextile is like a half-sextile. So it's, you know, halfway there type of thing. <laughs> and, um, you know, once you kind of allow certain things and feelings and emotions to kind of well up, then people start getting very passionate and very excited, you know, and I do think this person thinks that you're, you know, super sexy, gorgeous, hot, you know, and um, yeah, and I do think 
that, you know, there's a bunch of different ways that this could go. You know, there's a bunch of different, like, different ways. Like, they come see you, you go see them, they come closer to you to live closer to you. Like, there's a bunch of, if it works out, there's many different ways that this whole situation could go. And so let's see here. Ooh, we've got the diamond star, destiny, okay? I focus on service and I follow my higher purpose, okay? And that's gotta be the main thing, right? And I do think there is someone special in your life, pile number two, that's gonna have a major impact on your destiny and where you're headed in life. And I do think it could come through a romantic relationship. Um, and it could be with someone who's a little bit older that has a child, okay? But it has the potential to impact your destiny a lot. But Spirit is saying, as long as you focus on service and follow your higher purpose in life, you can't really go wrong, you know? And because sometimes like we meet people along the path of life and they become a bigger part of our destiny. You know, they really do over time, right? And we have here cancer and I feel, okay? There's a lot of water with the page of cups, the knight of cups, and now cancer. The emperor represents Aries, so we could have cancer Aries here. We also have the queen of wands, which could be Leo energy, okay? But, you know, this is a person who lives very passionately this person who trusts their instincts, who goes where their heart is calling them. And um, it's like, I can feel my destiny is like changing and I can feel something new is being nurtured, okay? And cancer is connected to the moon and family and children and history and all of that. And, uh, but cancer also has to do with home and feeling at home in someone else's home or feeling at home, like visiting someone. And perhaps you guys have a lovely way of hosting others or making others feel very at home when they're around you and feel very comfortable around you. But with cancer energy, it's all about like feeling comfortable, feeling at home, feeling like, you know, honoring your sensitivities, all of that, and um, being able to express yourself and your passions uh, emotionally, being comfortable to be vulnerable as well. And it's a pretty bold move to move for love. The emperor is a person who can make bold moves. Um, the emperor represents Aries energy and especially the Knight of Cups is about movement based on feelings and emotions. I feel that this is right, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Honestly, I feel pile number one, I feel this person may end up moving closer to be near you. Now, um, the question is, should you move for love? But I actually feel like this person's gonna come see you uh, probably multiple times or several times and the feelings are gonna grow is what I feel, okay? And, um, you know, and I do feel you guys have a destiny um, to create a family with someone where, you know, meeting someone significantly alters your life path and you go a different way with that person. I do think you guys have that written in your Akasha or written in your, um, you know, if you look at the lines on your palms, if you've ever guys have ever had like a palm reading or you've looked at your astrology and you've looked at the potential of moving abroad for a partner, which could represent, you know, the ruler of the seventh house and the ninth house or vice versa. Um, or something in your chart that indicates like a foreign partner. Um, anything with the ninth or the third house with your seventh house would indicate that, um, that there's travel involved or that there's, you know, perhaps a foreign partner involved or that you would meet a partner in that type of way. 
And I do think that there is something fabulous about your destiny and creating, you know, comfort, home, passion, stability, um, you know, with a sexy someone who is into you. And it starts off as a crush that kind of grows into more. And I do think there is potential to see that grow. Oh yeah, the Ace of Cups, of course, right? We've got, and then the King of Wands. Hey baby, you looking for a good time, right? I mean, that's the passion and the fire and the emotion and the confidence of the King of King of Wands, okay? Come here, it's time for your spanking, says the King of Wands, but anyway, and it starts off as a little cute flirtation with the Page of Cups and I feel like it grows into something else. All right, and oh, now this is what I'm talking about. Pile number two. We've got the king and queen of wands coming through together here. Look at you both, all right? Look at the love, look at the fun, look at the sexy energy between you two. Yeah, I'm gonna say for this pile, this is a pile where moving for love could definitely happen. Either you're moving for love or they're moving for love. I actually feel like they're going to come to live near you is what I feel pile number two. Like someone that likes you is going to come to live closer to you because they're into you. There is definitely a crush and a love match and unique feelings happening here between you and another person. And there is a vibe. I'm going to tell you that right now, pile number two. There is a vibe. Ooh, we've got the Seven of Swords here. And, you know, Seven of Swords can be like, I'm not sure exactly where this is going. Now, for those of you that have kids already with someone else or they have a child with someone else, you know, sometimes like when you're dating, it's a little bit challenging, right? Because you don't know when to introduce them to your kids. You don't know what to say to your kid. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a parent pile number two, so I can't say. But there might be <laughs> there might be some sneaking around or some like, oh shit, we almost got caught. Like we're not quite ready to tell our kids about this yet or we're not quite ready to tell our parents about this yet. For those of you that are younger, you know, and live at home or things like that, I could see something like that where, um, you know, you go to see this person, but it's like you guys decide, okay, we're, we do, our fam, we're not ready quite yet to introduce, um, you know, each other to each other's families yet. So, but we still want to see each other and we still want to get down that way. And we're still like really hyper attracted to one another. But how do we kind of, so there's some back and forth, I feel like with the seven of swords of, do you come see me or do I come see you? I think it's better because I see you sneaking out a window here and it doesn't look that comfortable. Now I'm not saying you're gonna have to sneak out a window, but you know, you may be comfortable more in your own home Pile number two, like you may be comfortable because it's like your security is there, you like it there. You know, I actually feel you would be more comfortable perhaps having them come see you um, and spend some time with you where you're at. It may not be the most comfortable situation where they're at. If there's like, you know, a father son situation going on, or there's, you know, a dad and a kid, or a mom and a kid, or, Something like that, it may not be like the most, you know, <laughs> comfy situation. So I actually think it's better, like if your place is more homey and like less, you know, complications going on, I actually feel like they should come and see you, okay? And there may be a little bit of sneaking around at first between you two because, I mean, this does have the potential to get serious and to go somewhere but then there's a lot of people, look at all the people around her. There's like a lot of different people that are kind of involved. So, you know, it might be friends that don't want you to move. It might be your own kid, your own kids. It might be your family that has a lot of comments on, you know, there's just a lot of moving, <laughs> moving pieces, if you will, pile number two. So my advice is to, you know, 
I think initially it's total fire and there's this major sexual attraction here and it really woo, wakes you up and it wakes them up. And at first, you know, maybe it's like, well, maybe it's just a crush or it's just a fling or whatever. And I feel like you go through that phase of questioning, is this, this a fl is this a fling? Is this, you know, whatever? But I actually feel like as time goes on, you and this person develop more feelings for each other, okay? But I actually feel like they come to you more often than not, okay? So pile number two, that is what I am getting for you guys. That is fun. I mean, it's kind of fun. It looks fun to me, my friends. Let me know if that reading resonated for you. Would love to hear your thoughts, your comments, and your feedback. Let's move on to pile number three. Okay. Pile number three, welcome to your reading. You chose the big eyes with the emotions in the eyes emoji, okay? And today's reading is called, Should You Move for Love? Maybe you're talking to someone or dating someone and they don't live where you are and you're like, should I do it? Should I move for love? And, or maybe you're just like, I'm sick of this town, you know? I don't know, maybe I should move for love, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at your reading and we will ask for pile number three. Spirit, can you show us moving for love for pile number three, please? Should pile number three move for love? Yeah, I just saw the seven of pentacles and the five of cups. So maybe you're not liking where you're at too much right now or you're thinking things have kind of stalled out there, but let's see here. For pile number three, should pile number three move for love? Should pile number three move for love? Eight of cups. Well, I can tell you, you need some time away from where you are currently at, or maybe you're trying to move anyway. Pile number three. And um, I'll tell you guys a story at some point, a moving story <laughs> that I had. Anyway, let's go ahead. Ooh, pile number three. Okay, so your song is Get Off by Prince. All right, and it says, there's a rumor going around that you ain't been getting served. They say that you ain't, you know what, and baby who knows how long. It's hard for me to say what, what's right when all I want to do is wrong. Ooh, pile number three. So maybe you feel like the well has run dry where you are, and it's like, I need to get the hell out of here. Let's see. We've got the king of swords, the six of pentacles, and judgment. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Well... Pile number three, how do you feel about relying on the kindness of strangers and the generosity of another person? Or how do you feel about somebody who, you know, is rich or wealthy or, you know, is promising to kind of give you what you need, but you're not used to giving up control um, and you're not used to somebody kind of making the decisions. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, pile number three. We've got the fourth house and roots, family, background, comfort, cooking, inner world, real estate, shelter, self-care, habits, and shell. Okay, and how we like to stay in our habits and we like to stay in our shell and we don't really like a lot of disruption to our fourth house a lot of the times. We like to feel safe and comfy where we are, okay? And um, let's see what else we have here. We have not speaking and lack of communication, okay? And that's interesting because the King of Swords could be... You know, it could be somebody who's very careful about what they say and very intelligent about what they say, very strategic about what they say, but it could also be somebody 
who is, um, you know, not really, who, who has like, uses the silent treatment, okay? And we have here the comfort zone in the south node and clinging on to what is comfortable, okay? And we have here the visionary awake. With, the, with an intuitive perspective, I see the, big, the bigger picture, okay? And that is definitely judgment energy, like the judgment card, like something has got to give, something has got to change. I can't stay here anymore. Okay, awake, an awake visionary with an intuitive perspective, I see the bigger picture, okay? And here's the thing, pile number three. I do feel that some of you could move for love and make that kind of decision, okay? But it may involve really relying on another person or relying on them to make all the decisions, take care of the money, do, you know, kind of do all of that, which may represent you kind of giving up and letting go of control. Um, and there may be a little bit of an issue there where you do want to move or you do want to go somewhere, but you also want to feel like, you know, you want to feel safe for sure with the fourth house and the clinging to your comfort zone, you know, and sometimes we move and there is that one person that we move for that makes us feel really secure and comfortable because they've got money, the six of pentacles, that's, you know, the moon and Taurus and it does represent material success. So somebody that is smart and knows how to make good decisions and, um, you know, and perhaps this is describing the type of person that maybe you would think about moving for, like somebody that is very decisive, smart, intelligent, makes good money, um, you know, generous with money or willing to be a provider with money. And, you know, but perhaps in a way, it kind of does represent a, a clinging to the past where, you know, you never felt truly free with the judgment card here, or you always felt like someone else was making the decisions or somebody else was in control, you know? And sometimes we go and we move somewhere with someone and we rely on them to make the choices and you know pay the bills or whatever. And we, we kind of cling on to that comfort zone. Even though we're away from home, um, we still want to find like some type of, uh, you know, some type of safety. So it's like, even though like we're not at home with our parents anymore, we've moved away from home. Um, you know, we still want to find something stable and secure to kind of hold on to. And, um, the only thing that I am not like too pleased with is this not speaking and lack of communication because, you know, when this person doesn't get their way or when they're not in control, how do they treat you? How do they act, you know, and when they can't be the person calling all the shots and sitting in the driver's seat with you kind of along for the ride, then what happens at that point? And, um, you know, unfortunately, there are some people that are, you know, not that great at communicating or they use communication in a weird way, like they use it in order to, um, you know, kind of control other people in like silent treatment and stuff like that. And maybe you guys grew up around that situation with your own father where they would get mad at you and give you the silent treatment or they weren't happy with you. So they 
really showed their disapproval through not speaking to you, okay? So if there is some type of situation like that, pile number three, and you're already noticing issues in communication with this person that reminds you. Um, also too, we have not speaking and lack of communication. If this person is, um, if you're being encouraged to leave home and go away from home because you're not speaking to your family or you know, because there may be people in your family that you want to let go of, or you don't really, you don't want to keep clinging on to the past. Okay. And perhaps there's some people in your family that are very draining. And with the South node in the fourth house, perhaps these are past life connections with family members that have been very draining for you emotionally. And you know, and you're seeing all these issues. The thing is with the visionary and being awake to everything now, pile number three, is that you're seeing the bigger picture of all these energies. Like if you've, li if you've left somewhere and you tried to do everything to change yourself for that person to fit into the mold of what they wanted from you, like you're getting, you're starting to understand how holding back and holding on to your comfort zone um, when it comes to, you know, holding on to relationships with family members who don't respect you and don't, um, you know, really like value your opinion and your wisdom and your knowledge and things like that. And like when people use communication in ways that are very disappointing, okay, um, you know, I feel these are some of the issues that, you know, and your family may not be too happy about you moving away or may not be speaking to you because you're moving away or you're not speaking with your own family. So you're like, I don't have anything to lose. Like, you know, I haven't been speaking to them for a while and I need a change and I need an opportunity to get away from the past and I should leave. You know, and pile number three, I'm not saying that you shouldn't leave because I do feel like there is something that you should leave from. And perhaps some of you need to, there's some, like I said, draining family situations that you need to move on from or walk away from, or there's just, you know, an inner exploration with the eight of cups here that you really need for you to kind of go off on your own and explore on your own. Now, here's the thing. If you do end up leaving for love, you know, I think you could potentially meet somebody who's very established, wealthy, well off, you know, but they may be obsessive, controlling, um, undermining, you know, they may have a lot more control than what you would like them to have over you, okay? Yeah, and this says Libra, I balance, okay? And so, you know, in relationships, and re Libra is a relationship sign, in relationships, you know, we need to find a good sense of balance. You know, comfort versus freedom versus the ability to make our own decisions, versus the ability to like, you know, be independent and be in the relationship. Like we need to find, um, and here's the thing with the particular person, for those of you that came here for a particular person, I don't, I, here's what I think pile number three. I think you can, and you should move. I think you should stay open to seeing the bigger picture and trying to travel to some different places and checking it out and not cling to the past or to family or to your roots or to comfort, especially if it's draining you and if it's toxic. I, I really think like, you know, go, yeah, definitely move on from that, right? But I also fear, fear not fear, but I feel if you are getting involved with somebody who is more like, 
you know, um, maybe controlling about what they believe, always thinks they have the right decision, gets mad if you don't follow what they do, tends to have, you know, it's kind of intense about things sometimes, very generous, very open with their money or very willing to spend money or take you out or do things like that, but also has a little bit of a controlling side or controlling streak to them. Um, you know, there needs to be balance in your relationships for sure. And um, so here's what I think. I think if you end up moving with this particular person, um, I do think you'll have security. I do think you'll have somebody who can make the decisions and take care of things. But I ultimately feel that you would be unhappy in the relationship and you would end up leaving the relationship um, because things are not balanced between you and this person. And I think ultimately you'd probably be in a new place and decide I'm leaving this relationship. Now that isn't a necessarily a bad thing because A, you've gotten away from the draining situations at home from, you know, the stagnant energy and the draining situations that you found at home. Um, but, and you're, you're a visionary, you're awake with an intuitive perspective. I see the bigger picture. So it's like, maybe you do end up moving for love, but you're not happy in the relationship. You end the relationship, you leave the relationship, but you're okay with being in the city that you're at, or you're okay with being where you are, or you're going to go off and explore other cities and end up in those other cities. And so, you know, the eight of cups on the bottom of the deck can definitely be like kind of a wandering soul or somebody who is intent to kind of go and explore things on their own, even if it seems a little bit scary, okay? Even if it seems a little bit hard or a little bit scary. And yeah, we have the ten of cups here. Ooh, we've got the king of cups. This is a much better match for you guys than this king of swords. And here's the thing, if you end up moving for love and it doesn't work out with this person, there is someone better for you waiting in that city is what I feel, pile number three. And sometimes life is like that. Like it doesn't go the way that we think it's gonna go, but we end up finding somebody that is like way more compatible. Yeah, the three of pentacles, like you can actually work with this person in this connection. It feels way more collaborative and way more like, you know, yeah, I I like this. I uh, Yeah, the two of wands, okay? And the two of wands really supporting you guys going out and, you know, finding a different job or finding a skill or learning a skill or learning a trade. Um, you know, I do feel like if you move somewhere with someone, it may not be what you think it's gonna be. You end up leaving the relationship, you meet someone way better. And not only do you meet someone way better and perhaps even have a family with this person, King of Cups and Ten of Cups, but your career and your money um, and your motivation really start to pay off as well. And um, you could meet this person through your work or through, um, you know, like networking events, social events, work, things like that. And um, this person really like believes in what you do or really thinks what you're really fabulous at your, your work and what you do. And I also feel, for those of you that want to have children, I feel you could have a child with this King of Cups and your child could be immensely talented. I mean, immensely fucking talented um or there's just something within your like inner child that awakens when you're with this person where you get back to studying and learning and doing old things that you forgot about in the past and you're essentially after this other relationship ends i feel like you're looking forward to the future and you meet someone way better i i actually the king of cups and the ten of cups is a way better match for you than this King of Swords and Six of Pentacles. Because this King of Swords and Six of Pentacles reminds you of people from your family and people who have problems with communication and people who give you the silent treatment and people who are controlling. And 
You know what I mean? I feel like you meet somebody who's really special and open and caring and gentle and sensitive and passionate and it sets off a whole chain of life events for you guys that really goes nicely. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy because there is this path of the Eight of Cups of walking a path where you might feel alone for a while or you might feel on your own for a while or you might feel like, you know, I mean, you could just skip this person entirely and just move to a different city on your own and meet somebody. You know what I mean? And so if you do have somebody in your life who reminds you of somebody from your family, who's draining, who's controlling, who's constantly always thinking they're right, who gives you the silent treatment, who, um, you know, has money or is generous or successful, but also is very controlling in the relationship and demanding in the relationship. Okay. Like I would say pass on that and just, you know, skip to the good part, right? Skip to the good part. And that may involve, that may be a little bit scary of you guys kind of going off on your own and doing your own thing for a while in a different city. And I could see that really working out for you, you know, and with judgment and Libra being the sign of relationships, I feel like it's like, wow, I need a massive overhaul and I need a massive change when it comes to relationships and the type of people that I'm choosing to be with. And I'm not going to do it the way I did it in the past. Fuck that. Okay. Is what I feel like you guys are saying. So very good pile number three. I really liked your pile. Thank you so much, my loves. I hope you enjoyed this reading and I would love to hear your thoughts, your comments, and your feedback. Take care.